One thing this war has made clear to Israel and the whole world is that Iran is the mastermind behind the war in Israel, hell-bent on our destruction. In April 2024, when Iran launched its first ever direct missile attacks on Israel, I found myself sitting with my family near bomb shelters, waiting for hundreds of drones and missiles to hit us. At that moment, I couldn't help but ask, why does Iran, a country nearly 1,500 miles away that was once one of our closest allies in the region, hate Israel so much? I'm Eyo Pinto, and this is My State, a program about current events, my belief in God, and my journey in the Holy Land. And I'm standing in TBN Israel Studios in the heart of Jerusalem, reporting to you. At first glance, it doesn't really add up. Most of Israel's wars have been with our neighboring countries, and the majority of Israel's Muslim neighbors, including Palestinian Arabs, are Sunni. Iran, on the other hand, is Shia. Sunnis and Shiites have been at odds for around 1,500 years. So why do they even care about Israel's conflicts with people that they actually hate? The Shah of Iran had secular, pro-Western values. He allowed for education and women's rights, but he was also a harsh dictator who jailed, tortured, and executed many Iranians. And over time, this, along with his pro-Western stance, made him pretty unpopular. In 1979, the Islamic Revolution erupted, overthrowing the Shah, and the new extreme Islamic leader took over, Ayatollah Khomeini. The Islamic Republic of Iran was established. The Ayatollah soon made it clear that the West was out and the goal of the Sharia law throughout the Islamic world and ultimately the entire world was in. The Ayatollah openly said, we will export our revolution to the entire world. And that's where Israel comes into the picture. For one thing, Iran views Israel as the West's foothold in this region. The Ayatollah calls the United States the Great Satan and Israel the Little Satan. For Iran to rid the region of westernization and expand westward, they believe that Israel must be destroyed first. Iran despises the peace that Israel has made with several Sunni Muslim countries in this region. These alliances threaten Iran's grips on the Middle East. Countries like Saudi Arabia and the Gulf states are now open to more moderate ideals and value trade collaborations with the West and with Israel. Yet, they too are tired of being bullied by Iran and its brutal extremist militants causing chaos and controlling the region. Understanding and fearing the shift of power in the Middle East, Iran began uniting Muslims across the region and beyond as a common enemy of Israel, using the Palestinian conflict as a rallying point. They built a powerful anti-Israel machine, arming a network of terrorist proxies in countries surrounding Israel, all bent on our destruction. As Iran continues to spread its dangerous ideology, manufacturing and arming more proxies and inching closer to a nuclear power, we cannot underestimate the threat that they pose to Israel and the entire world. I'm meeting with Benny Shabti, a researcher in the Iran program at the Institute for National Security Studies to discuss the Iranian threat and how best we can tackle it. So it's good to be here with you, Benny Shabti. You were born and raised in the Islamic Republic of Iran. I think before it was the Islamic Republic of Iran and yeah. then you, you moved to Israel. So I really would like to hear about your background a little bit. My uh, history begins as a child in, in Iran. I was born before the revolution. When I was seven years old, uh, the revolution, the Islamic revolution happened. Before the revolution, there were 120,000 Jews in Iran. It was a very successful community of Jewish people, very successful, very involved in the Iranian life. Dozens of synagogues that were open. Suddenly, in a few nights, the whole life changed. About 70, 80,000 uh, Jews just escaped. We remained about uh, 40,000, and most of them left their houses and cars and everything. 
I want to ask about the time where Iran actually was a big ally of Israel yes, yeah. and we were partners in this region. Yes. I mean, can you maybe share a little bit about how life was there yes. then and uh, what changed all of that? There were bars in Tehran and, and cinemas and cabarets and, and the women were free to wear whatever they want. I remember that Bee Gees yeah. and Bonnie M came to Iran and Frank Sinatra also. They had the concert in 74. In that year, there was wow. Asia Olympics and Israel participated. Really? In that games in Iran and there was not one uh, Israeli high figure that didn't visit Iran. Ariel Sharon and Yitzhak Rabin and Shamir and every general that you want, Moshe Dayan. So, um, so what changed? It's the propaganda, the mm. ideology. The radical clerics that they talk in the mosques, maybe they talk about charity at first and, and uh, helping the poor. Yeah. It sounds very nice, and but after the uh, fourth, five, fifth sentence, they go to the, okay, who took our bread? Who took our water? Who raped our daughters? And it's Israel and it's US and the Western uh, ideology and liberal ideology. So all the youngs, grow with hatred against Israel and America. And this is what happened in the 60s and the 70s. And the Shah, the king of Iran, didn't pay attention to that. Mm. Didn't control it. And so when we came to 78, 79, everything was prepared ah. for the revolution. Propaganda and radical ideology are the base. We have to bring out these things from the root. Just like what happened with October 7 in Hamas. Uh, Hamas kindergartens that they teach the children to slaughter a puppet that has a, a Star of David on it. In Gaza. In Gaza. And now we have 20 years old, 24 years old terrorists who came to Israel in October 7 and they killed us and raped us and, and everything that happened. The West has to wake up. The radical revolution can happen in New York, in Los Angeles, if they don't control it in Paris, in London, liberal people are kind of naive. In these difficult times, supporting Israel's artisans and small businesses is more crucial than ever. That's why we're proud to partner with Arza Box. Each subscription brings the best of the Holy Land right to your door, while directly supporting the farmers, craftsmen, and families of Israel. Imagine tasting the flavors of Jerusalem or displaying handmade crafts from the hills of Galilee. Every Arza box connects you with the rich history and traditions of Israel, while giving you a piece of its vibrant culture and spirit. Go to www.arzabox.com and use our code TBNIL for an exclusive 10% discount on your first subscription. Thank you for your support and may God bless you. We've seen that uh, Iran has been forming a ring of fire around Israel yeah. with training these proxy groups, with arming them, with radicalizing them, and basically uniting them against Israel. Yeah. Especially, you can talk about Hamas, Hezbollah, and the Houthis, but there are more. Can you explain how did that happen and how does this support the Iranian ideology and what's their, what's their goal? So I go back to 79. Mm -hmm. It began in that days. Right after the revolution, there was a slogan, today we free Iran, tomorrow we free Palestine. Also death to Israel and death to Begin and death to Carter and death to Sadat who wow. made the Camp the David the yeah. agreement. Yes, they were against peace. They, they are and they were against peace. Mm -hmm. And right after that, they established IRGC, the Revolutionary Guards. Their job is just like Gestapo, just like SS, to expand the revolution, to expand the ideology. And they established Hezbollah. A few months after the revolution, about 20 guys from IRGC took themselves and came to South Lebanon, and they gathered some Shiite uh, groups and said, hey, you know where your problems come from? Israel is to blame. We can give you arms, we can give you ideology, we can bring you the trainings, we can give you everything. Just fight against Israel and we pay you. This is Hezbollah. Iran comes to Hamas in January, February 96, and they give them 
money and training and weapons and ideology and everything they want. Free, free. Mm -hmm. Just do some attacks in the middle of Tel Aviv because we don't want this pro peace process to go on. After uh, oh. assassination against Rabin, since then the hatred of Israel unites them. The IDF found Iranian ideological books in the tunnels and their ideology is, is everywhere here. Why all of them hate Israel so much? Israel is a kind of obstacle in the Middle East for the Iranian Shiite empire to re-establish again. If you look on the maps of about 300 AD or even before that, Iran was from Afghanistan and Pakistan to Egypt. And look at the map of the uh, Middle East today. Iran, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, it's one country. The empire, the evil empire is here. I don't yeah. have any problem with that ancient empire because they were good to the Jews, but it's not the same. The money of oil, selling oil, it serves only terror and the nuclear program. Mm -hmm. Iranian people are sitting in dark. They have seven, eight hours of lack of electricity. The roads collapse and Iran regime doesn't care about it. Talking about Iran's future aspirations, we've been dealing with their ambitions to reach a nuclear bomb yeah. for, for many, many years. And very soon they will have a nuclear weapon. Is this true? So in these last uh, four years, Iran was kind of allowed to go much further from uh, enriching three and a half percent of uranium. Now they are about 90 percent. It's almost wow. for the bomb. Yes, it's they, they have the capability and the, the uh, materials to build the bomb. The thing is that they they don't know how to put everything together. I'm not an expert, but making a warhead is a very difficult thing technologically. If we, we allow them and we ignore, ignore all the signs, maybe in a year and a half, they will have the bomb. What do you think that Israel and the United States and the West should do in order to stop Iran from achieving its, its evil aspirations of destroying Israel, then destroying Europe and the West? When you say Europe, you remind me something that three months ago, former commander of IRGC, who now is an advisor of the leader, said he, we have to expand our borders to 5,000 kilometers, more than what is today. 5,000 kilometers from Iran is not Israel, it's London. Oh, wow. So I suggest the whole West to be very careful. We have also to talk with words to support Iranian people, mm -hmm. that 80% of them didn't come to vote in the elections wow. and they support Israel and they love US and they love the West because they know that there is a good life in these Western countries and to support Israel because Israel is the first front of the West. If US supports Israel and the West supports Israel, it's actually supporting their houses. Yeah, it always starts with the Jewish people and then it goes to the Christian exactly. and to the rest of the world. Exactly. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Definitely. Knowledge is power, even when it's hard to face. Iran is a real global threat that no one who values their freedom, their way of life, or their principles should ignore. Beyond that, the people of Iran themselves are tired of suffering under the Ayatollah's brutal regime. Many Iranians actually support Israel and long for the fall of the oppressive Islamic Republic of Iran. It's crucial that the global community stands together to defeat this true evil spreading throughout the world. So please pray that those blinded by lies will see the truth. Pray that Israel and the world will prevail in this ultimate battle of good versus evil. And as always, pray for the peace of Jerusalem and God will win this war because He's in control. Hello, this is Mati here in Jerusalem with TBN Israel. This is Yair Pinto from TBN Israel here in Jerusalem. TBN Israel is keeping viewers informed with Israel-focused news, culture, and what God is doing in this land. Support TBN Israel today online at tbn.org Israel. Thank you.